You may have seen this symbol before. This is the symbol for a ideal direct current constant voltage source. Actually, it's a concept. It's a tool that we use to talk about electricity and to perform circuit analysis. First, let's talk about the rules of operation. There are two things you need to know. The first is that this device produces a constant direct current voltage. Constant DC voltage. Which voltage? Whichever voltage we desire. If we want this to be 10 volts direct current, it can be. If we want it to be 110 volts, that's fine. It could even be negative 10 volts. Whichever we desire is what it will be. Second rule of operation, the current will do whatever necessary in order to maintain that voltage, in this case, at 10 volts DC. If the load demands, the current will go to negative infinity. If the load demands, the current can go to positive infinity. Those are the rules you need to remember about an ideal constant voltage source. Let's put one in circuit and see how it operates. So here, we're going to use a simple resistor as the load, and we're going to vary the load and see what happens. Let's declare our constant voltage source to be 10 volts DC. And now, to make the circuit a little more useful, we're going to add some instrumentation. We'll put an amp meter here, and we'll put a voltmeter here. This will allow us to measure the voltage and current through the resistor. If you recall Ohm's law, tells us that the current is equal to the voltage divided by the resistance. So now we can take this resistor and we can change the value and see what happens. Let's tabulate it. So we have the resistor, we have the voltage across the resistor, and we have the current flowing through the resistor. And we'll pick some random values here. So for example, 10 ohms. The voltage across that resistor will be 10 volts, because after all, this is a constant DC voltage. If you do that, the voltage will be 10, the resistance is 10, the current will be 1 amp. We could try again, this time with 1 ohm, again 10 volts across, yielding 10 amps. And we'll do one more time, again 10 volts and 100 amps. In fact, we could continue this as long as we wanted, and eventually we reach a point where there's zero resistance. The voltage across this is 10 volts, and the current through has gone to infinity. Again, this is a concept. You can't actually build one of these. Um, one thing I'd like to draw your attention to is this column. We see that no matter what has happened, we have constant voltage. And in this column, you see that the current has done whatever necessary in order to keep that voltage constant. Next, let's look at some of the rules for operating these devices. And in particular, let's look at a series connection. If you wanted, you could stack several of these together. For example, you could connect them like so. Maybe this is 5 volts DC, and this is 10 volts DC. When you do that, that gives you an output of 15 volts DC. And you can stack as many as you like. Maybe you needed another one like so. And this would now give you 25 volts DC. Now, you notice that I've kept the polarity here. We've gone from negative to positive, connected to the negative to the positive, connected to the negative to the positive. Be careful that you don't do something silly like this. Here I've got the polarities incorrect. And when you do this, let's see, let's declare each one of these to be 100 volts DC. 100 volts DC, the output will actually be zero volts. To better understand why, let's put ourselves right here and look at the voltage going this way. We'll see that this is a 100 volt rise. Likewise, if you do this, you'll see another 100 volt rise. The difference between the two is zero. Or another way to say this 
is if we ground this part here, and then we look from here to here, we would see negative 100 volts. And if we went from here to here, we would see 0 volts. We could do one more thing, and that is, instead of having the polarity as we had it before, I'm going to change the polarity like so, and now I'm going to declare this to be negative 100 volts DC. You notice in that operation I haven't actually changed the circuit any. As we go from ground up to this first node here, we still see that there's 100 volts, and then when we go to this node, there is 0 volts. That's the series connection. Let's look at the parallel connections now. If you want, you could connect up two devices like so. And if we declared each one to be 10 volts direct current, we would have an output of 10 volts DC. No worries there. We could even do a series parallel combination if we wanted. We could go like this. Again, get your polarities correct. Let this one be 20 volts DC. Let this one be 10 volts DC. Our output is now 20 volts DC. At this point, you should be asking yourself a question. And that is, okay, well what happens if they're in parallel, but the voltages don't add up? Let's find out. So what we'll do is we're going to establish a new circuit. So we'll put one here, one here. We'll connect them up, and we'll put a resistor in between. Declare this one to be 20 volts DC. Declare this one to be 10 volts DC. And we'll declare this to be some R. Now, what's the voltage in this circuit? It depends where you look. So let's put Alice over here. And Alice is looking. Alice will see 20 volts. If we put Bob on this side, if Bob has a voltmeter, Bob will see a 10 volt power supply. And if we put Carol up here, Carol looks across the resistor. Carol sees 20 minus 10, or you, we could just say that Carol sees 10 volts. Again, Carol being the resistor here. As before, we can tabulate this and see what happens as the resistor changes. So we have some resistance. We have some voltage across that resistor. Again, that's Carol in our little diagram. And we have the current through the resistor. So if the resistor is 10 ohms, the voltage drop will be the difference between the two power supplies. So that will be 10 volts. The current will be 1 amp. Again, if we lower it, now we'll get, again, 10 volts across. We get 10 amps. And as before, we can continue on with this until we arrive at 0 ohms. 10 volts, and infinity. And that's kind of an interesting place when you think about it, because if we rewrite Ohm's law, that tells us that voltage is equal to current times resistance. And here we have 10 volts is equal to an infinite current times 0. Mm. Well, let's just say this is not a terribly good idea. Don't put your voltage sources in parallel unless there's a resistor across them. Speaking of current, let's go back and look at this circuit and figure out which way the current is flowing. So our convention tells us that current is going to flow from the most positive downhill to the negative. So the most positive thing in this circuit, by the way, let's do ourselves a favor. and Let's ground the circuit right here. The most positive point becomes this node right here. So we have 20 volts. So current is going to be flowing this way. How much current? Well, it depends on the resistance. Again, if it was 10 ohms, we saw that there would be 1 amp of current flow. So that means the current is flowing through this power supply and down through this power supply. So we would say that the 20 volt power supply has a positive current or is providing current. and the negative, or excuse me, the 10 volt power supply here is sinking the current. You could think of this 
kind of as a battery. You're, you're charging with the battery, the 10 volt power supply. Let's do a quick review what we just talked about. So let's look at the rules. We learned that a DC ideal constant voltage source gives us constant DC voltage. Constant DC voltage at whatever voltage we desire. We saw that the current will do whatever is necessary to make that statement true. Okay. Again, we always keep voltage constant. We determined that this could be rewritten as this. Okay, so you got to watch your polarities. That's a trick instructors love to play on you. We determined that series connection is okay. And we determined that parallel connection is okay only if the voltages match.